I always wanted my own business. I think that's the American dream. The American dream is, you know, is to be able to work for yourself. So I think that everyone should inspire to, you know, at some point in time in life, work for themselves. When you first open up a business, it's like everyone's excited about it, something new. So, you know, when I first started, it was, it was good. You know, a lot of people came to support. And then, you know, you had the, that spell where, you know, it's, it's like, okay, you're, you're here now. And the buzz is, is kind of, you know, down. So what do I need to do to kind of keep that buzz going? It's trying to be creative, trying to find uh, new ways to kind of like uh, push culture cuts as a brand, as a place where people can come and have fun, get their hair cut, enjoy. You know, I, I do videos, I do promotions. Um, so the dream is, has come true. You know, I, I, have, I have Culture Cuts as a barbershop, as a place. I just want to be able to take Culture Cuts to different, different levels. Eventually, you know, the ultimate goal is to have multiple locations. Um, but right now, we're just going to build up this location. We're just going to build up the, the brand in itself. We're just going to focus on 1401 North Codner Boulevard. Unit 202, and we're gonna try to make this the best that we can make it. I was born in Alexandria, Louisiana. Um, I came to Nebraska in 1991. I've been living in Lincoln for over 20 years. I went to Hartley Elementary. I went to Color uh, Middle School, Park Middle School. Uh, graduated from Lincoln High in 04. Lincoln is home. I know a lot of people here. A lot of people know me and my family. So what, what better place to open a business than a place that kind of molded you as, a, as an individual, as a person? Growing up in Lincoln, Nebraska, you know, we were less fortunate. And I, I never was able to go to a barbershop to get my hair cut because it just, we just didn't have the money. I lived in a single parent home with my mom. My mom was, you know, she was doing all that she can, but you know, she just couldn't afford to spend money, extra money on getting our hair cut. So I always wanna make things affordable as far as like haircuts. I usually charge $25 a hair cut just because I feel that I want to be able to give everyone a great looking haircut for an affordable price. And that's why my haircut is only $25. I uh, started cutting hair back when I was like 16 years old. You know, I used to cut my brother's and cousin's hair. I had a mentor. His name is Nick Orduna. And he used to cut my hair in his basement. Uh, he, was, uh, he was a mentor of mine. And uh, he used to give me free haircuts in the basement. And, you know, I just love our conversations. Love talking to him. You know, and he, he did that for many kids. Not just me, you know. He did that for many kids in the city of Lincoln, and I know that Coach O, he, uh, he's, he's, he's loved by many. And that's kind of what's kind of sparked me as to, like, this is what I want to do. All of these artworks in here has, uh, is symbolic for a reason, you know. You have the black woman with the afro with the inspirational quotes on her head, you know, that's like, that's culture, you know, that's culture, you know, and then you have the two hands holding, that's the cultures coming together. Then we have as the, the Jordan number one, that's culture because that's everybody come up, you know, in, in the 90s off Michael Jordan. We have uh, the the watch, which is time is precious, uh, don't waste it with all type of, you know, quotes on there, purpose, uh, motivation, uh, you know, patience. You know, so everything in here has is symbolic. The plants is symbolic to grow. We want to grow. Everything has has a purpose in here. You know, and and, and I put everything together in here all by myself. I'm proud of it. You know, everyone enjoys it when they come in here. I have a story past, man. I have a testimony for real. A lot of things I don't talk too much about because it's the past, and I put the past behind me so I can move forward. When I was uh, 19 years old, I caught a federal case. And uh, I ended up going away when I was 21 years old 
for uh, selling drugs. It was, it was hard, you know. Um, I was married at the time. I had a child on the way. And uh, here I am at 21 and I have to go and turn myself into a federal penitentiary for some bad decisions that I made. You know, that was when my life just paused. It paused. When I was sitting in the penitentiary, that was my rock bottom. That was my rock bottom. You know, my daughter, I missed a lot of time in her life. She's 14 now. It was all because I made bad decisions. And what this is, 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 is a testimony that you can come back from those bad decisions. And once you put your faith in God and you just like give it all to him and say, this is my life is yours. Take it. You know, this is what I want to do. This is this is my dream. Just take it. And God just, you know, helped me through a lot of things in life. And, and, and he's the reason why I'm here to, today. You know, I did. I did seven and a half years and and I and I came out. I started working at a construction company called RMV for $10 an hour. And I told myself, you know, I'm just gonna do what I need to do and work this job and be the best that I can be. I did construction for the past seven years. Had a couple major surgeries within the last two, within two years apart. I tore my Achilles and then I tore my labrum in my left shoulder. And, uh, you know, upon that last injury, um, I just felt like I had to find something a little bit more easier on my body. So I decided to come go to the College of Hair Design and get my barbering degree. I didn't miss a single hour when going to the College of Hair Design. I graduated early and here I am. I opened this up. I opened up Culture Cuts three weeks after I graduated from the College of Hair Design. I just want everybody to know that, you know, you that just because you make a you know a bad mistake that you it doesn't it doesn't dictate the way that you you know live the rest of your life hmm what would i tell my mom if she was here right now i'll just tell her that you know that i made it you know, I'm here. Um, that I'm, I'm keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm still going. You know, putting one foot after another. My mom was my biggest rock. How does it feel? to give my kids the stuff that I didn't have. It feels amazing, man. You know? That's what we do it for. You know, we do it for family. You know, I ain't have a dad. Mom was everything. We ain't had the new clothes, new shoes. But, oh, we had each other. It was hard, you know, it was hard. You know, I had going to school, everybody else got new clothes. We got stuff, we got hand-me-down stuff from Salvation Army, you know, but we made it work, you know. We had each other though, at the end of the day. Hell, so yeah, it feel good to give my kids the things that I never had growing up. It does, it feels really good. Like keep going, keep getting up every day. Keep getting up every day. You only, uh, you know, as long as you win the day, then that's like big. You know, you can't worry about what happened yesterday. Can't worry about what happened last week. Can't worry about what happened last year. You just gotta, you know what I'm saying, worry about today. And if you win today, then, you know, it's just, is life, tomorrow is just gonna be that much easier.